and welcome to the Bearded Guy Podcast channel. I'm your host, Scott Winters. Now, I'm doing a video adaptation of a series from my Conspiracy Theory podcast that I posted on Buzzsprout a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just trying some different things here. So I wanted to put it into a video format, and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I hope that it gives you some insight into uh, not only conspiracy theories, but also our first one right out of the gate, the Illuminati. You know, are they this all-powerful and controlling force behind the scenes that manipulate our our world leaders and our and our, our government officials? I'll let you be the judge of that as we dive into this episode of Conspiracy Theory here on the Bearded Guy Podcast Channel. So welcome to this introductory episode and a series of episodes dealing with conspiracy theories. Now, I chose this topic for the series because... You know, there's a there's a great number of, of stories out there about the Illuminati, you know, and how much power they actually wield in the world today. So I wanted to peel away that onion and look at what the Illuminati actually were or was or is. I mean, for that matter, I mean, let's think about it. Now, another reason I chose the 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 Illuminati to start my series of, of episodes about this subject on conspiracy theories is because... My youngest son, Cain. Now, I remember him asking me, you know, and being concerned with the possibility that this group actually controls the world and has the power to influence anyone and everything. Now, for a young, impressionable mind, the Internet really is a dark and scary place, and it's filled with enough misinformation to fill up the ocean. I mean, come on. Now, because of this line of questioning, I started researching this topic, and honestly, I was very surprised at what I found. You know, it all starts with this. We have to stop for a moment and, and take a questioning look, if you will, at society and the state of the world as we know it. Now, do that for a moment. Just stop and think. Now, does it appear to you that the world seems to be in a constant state of chaos? I mean... Day after day after day, we watch our duly elected politicians. They bicker and argue back and forth about their idealistic personal beliefs and what they actually think societal norms should be for you and I. Now, to them, they feel we should all subscribe to their worldview. Now, it really doesn't matter who you are. If you're, if you're Republican, if you're Democrat, if you're a dictator, if you're a king, you know, at some point, power and control are going to be taken from you forcibly, or you're going to pass it on to the next in the long line of who's who. Now, it really doesn't matter who or what they believe. They think what they're peddling is absolute and right and what is needed to save our society. Now, from the outside looking in, it seems like it's always an exhaustive struggle for power and control over that little tiny anthill that they have claimed their stake over. So it leads to the question, well, it really leads to this question. Where does the power and control really reside? I mean, it's certainly not with our politicians and our leaders. So if you're like me and you've stopped to take a look around and take it all in, did it make you question who's really controlling this never ending freak show? I mean, it makes me wonder, and probably more than I should, and probably more than I should even care to wonder about things like this. So the point of this episode is this, who is actually in control? Now, there are some in this world who contend wholeheartedly and, and without a doubt believe that the world is actually controlled by the secretive group called the Illuminati. Now, while researching this topic, I can honestly say that I believe there's some merit to the fact that there are secretive groups in the world and have been throughout history. Um, but is there anything to uh, these secret societies having the kind of control and power that some think they do? So let's start by looking at some of the history of this group that has long been held up as the be-all, end-all in ultimate control. Now, the history of the Illuminati actually goes back to around the 17th century, and the name Illuminati actually comes from the Latin word Illuminatus, which means enlightened. And historically, when someone is referring to the, the group, the Illuminati, they are referring to the, what was known as the Bavarian Illuminati. And oddly enough, this is where most people 
you know, myself included, find themselves starting their journey when researching this topic. Now, there have always been those groups that are on the fringe or outside the norm, but it was during the Age of Enlightenment that free thinking and free thinkers were actually gaining traction and surged in popularity. Now, one such free thinker that started a movement that has endured to this day was Adam Weisopt. He was responsible for the foundation of this group of free thinkers in 1776. Now, he was a German professor of canon law. He was also a, a philosopher and a free thinker. Now, his group didn't start out with the moniker, the Illuminati. It was originally named Bunda Perfectibiliston. Now, when translated, that means covenant of perfectibility. And of course, the name was later changed again to the Illuminaten Orden or the, Illumin the Order of the Illuminati. Now, the way people refer to it most commonly these days is just simply the Illuminati. So Adam, who was also a member of the, of the Freemasons, uh, actually left the group, the Freemasons, because he felt like they were not accepting to his idealistic views about religion and politics and his beliefs on how society should actually be. Now, if you look at it at its essence, in the beginning, this was really just a movement made up of like-minded individuals uh, who believed in free thought, secularism, and liberalism, and of course, the sciences. The fuel for their free thinking fire was being added from a very unlikely source. It was the church. And at the time of the Age of Enlightenment, there was growing social objection to the control and corruption of the Roman Catholic Church. And really, it's all-powerful hold on society. And based on historical reports, the dominance of the Catholic Church at the time reached far and wide and actually covered all aspects of our day-to-day -day lives. And just how much control they actually had in the 17th century, it's easy to see why there were fringe groups that sprang up and gained traction in those days. Now, unfortunately, corruption uh, was really rampant in the early history of the church before the Reformation. And because of the sins of the church, it created in Weisopt a disdain and disgust for the teachings and what he considered heresy within the church. So you see, he was not an evil man. I mean, he wasn't bent on controlling the world as some have alleged him to be. His main goals and driving force for forming the Illuminati were, were simply this, equality for all, liberty for all, absolute independence, humanity and morality, and enlightened reasoning. So you see, the original intent of the group was not as sinister as most conspiracy theorists you know, would have you believe. The original intent of the movement was st that that was started by Weishaupt was actually to be free of the tight grasp of Christianity at the time and replace it with what he considered to be a religion of a religion of enlightened and reasoned truth. Now, during the lifespan of the Illuminati, there were many changes to key players and, of course, power holders within the group. And there were also divisions and arguments over fundamental beliefs. But, you know, such is the way of things. And it only stands to reason that people are people and even like minded individuals are going to be fundamentally different. Now, in the end, because of government intervention, the original Bavarian Illuminati was dismantled and most of the group's secret documents were publicly disclosed. And Weisopt himself was actually expelled from Bavaria and the group was never to be heard from again. Now, some say this was the end of the Illuminati. Others, however, think this was not the case. And more to the point, it is believed that because of this suppression, that it only drove the Illuminati further underground to continue in its quest for power, control, and, of course, enlightenment. Now, adding fuel to this fire, uh, Weisop's Illuminati were actually blamed for anything and everything during that time, which only went to further the conspiracy that has existed to this day. So again, ask this simple question, you know, what does this secretive group founded in the Age of Enlightenment have to do with what we have come to believe about them? You know, what they control and if they actually have absolute power. And the simple answer is this, probably nothing at all. I mean, groups like this were at the time made ridicule of and were outlawed for obvious reasons. They went against the grain of popular thought. And more importantly, they went against the Christian church and their teachings and, of course, their heresies. 
Now, as I see it, any control that is believed to be held by the Illuminati is nothing more than just internet fodder that continues the myth and the legend that they are secretly working behind the scenes doing the bidding of the devil himself. Now, over the years, there have been many secret societies that have found themselves under the scrutiny of the microscope from time to time. And to name a few that actually make this list that are known as actual secret societies, they are the following. The Freemasons, the Mafia, the Ku Klux Klan, the Skull and Bones, Order of the Dragon, and the Tongs. But really think about it. No matter the name or nature of the secrets of, of secret societies, you know, aside from a few of the ones that I just mentioned, more times than not, the intent is not to create social unrest and turmoil, but it's more to so to seek a higher enlightenment and further a cause, or really just to be different from society at any given time. Now, as a side note to this this conspiracy in this story. I think it's really humorous watching celebrities, you know, name dropping the Illuminati, you know, either openly or cryptically, you know, using references in their songs and allusions to something bigger and more sinister than it really, than it really was where it actually is now. You know, this is nothing more than name dropping to me. And it's kind of like me, your, your, your lowly neighborhood podcaster, dropping the name Vanilla Ice. You know, I actually met Vanilla Ice, good old Ice Ice Baby himself, but does it have any bearing on the world around me? No, not at all. Not really at the end of the day. I mean, it's really a cool story to tell, but it has no bearing on anything. So really in closing, throughout our history, there have been moments when you see a rising star come out of nowhere, and they bring with them these radical ideas that go against the very grain of the time's current popular political and theological thought. And they have this way of creating what I call organized chaos. And the effect of this chaos, you know, is, is really how it gets people to view the world through a different set of lenses. Now, whether their ideas are right or wrong is really not the issue at hand. It's the side effect of their ideas and their worldview that is at issue with some. Now, more times than not, the, the true question and issue of the day is who will wield absolute control over people's thoughts and actions? Now, let's talk about those pesky politicians we spoke about earlier. I mean, you know the ones that are supposedly put in place by the Illuminati. I say not so much, and I call foul on the play. I mean, ultimately... That really just boils down to people being human, wanting to stay in power at any cost, and they'll tell you what you want to hear or what you need to hear. But think about it. Rarely do they ever deliver on the promises they make in that moment when they're trying to hang on to their absolute power. So to answer my son's questions, yes, the Illuminati was real in every sense of the word. Do they dominate and control the free world and manipulate the, manipulate the world leaders behind the scenes? You know, I think we can rest easy tonight knowing that they don't. This is not the case with the Illuminati. So on a conspiracy rating of 1 to 10, I give this one about a 4. I mean, really, it's a great story, and it does have some roots in truth that are deep in our history. But really, in the end, it's nothing more than just a, a really good fantasy. And it'll always have a home here on the Internet. So there you go, the Illuminati, fact or fiction, you be the judge, I call foul, I say no. <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a podcaster, just a video creator. Maybe there's something to it, maybe there's not, I don't think so. But I just want to thank you for watching, thanks for coming by today, thanks for joining us on this little, little jaunt through history. Now with all of my podcast episodes, I try not to be exhaustive, to turn people off and to be boring. I try not to throw so much information out there that you get lost in the rabbit trails. It's really just to spur your curiosity and start you down that, tra that trail or that path to, to figure out what truth is for you. So thanks for coming by. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, please check out my podcast on buzzsprout.com. That is buzzsprout.com, the Bearded Guy podcast. We're also on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts. I'm actually on Alexa TuneIn, and I'm trying to get on iHeart now. So hopefully that'll happen at soon. So join us on the, on the podcast episodes about conspiracy theories. That's going to be a multi-episode series that we're doing there 
And we'll, we'll continue to do this video transfer of the podcast here. And hopefully, as we go along, it'll get better than this initial one. And hopefully, you'll join us for more in future episodes. But thanks for coming by. Thank you for stopping in. You know, and as always, I hope you have a great day, a better day tomorrow, and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.